Hello everyone, I'm Linda. The Sun I'm the Sunday school teacher at St Mary Magdalene's Church. Pentecost is a special day in the Christian calendar because today we celebrate the birthday of the Christian Church. If we were in our church, it would be decorated in red, which is the colour of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit plays an important part in the story of Pentecost. We'll come to that a bit later, but watch out for every time you hear Holy Spirit. And for now, I want you to think about all of the members of our church. I'm sure you agree with me that they're all very different. It doesn't matter what colour our skin is. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what job we do, where we were born or how much money we have. It doesn't matter what has happened in our lives in the past or what language we speak. We are all united because we all believe that Jesus is our Saviour and that Jesus loves us. I'd like to start with a prayer, so let's bow our heads and pray. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come among us like a wind, like a fire, like a dove. Come gently or come boldly. We are waiting for you. Amen. I've put together a quiz on languages. Have you ever been abroad and felt out of place because you couldn't understand what people were saying? Have you ever been abroad and suddenly someone says something in English and you felt good because you could finally understand it? Today's quiz tests whether you can recognise the word for welcome in lots of different languages. It doesn't matter how many you get right, as long as you have fun and maybe learn a few new words. Knowing a foreign language is a gift because then people can talk to each other. And if we can talk to one another, we're one step closer to loving our neighbour, as Jesus taught us to do. So let's start with the first word. Here it is. Welcome. Is it French? Is it German? Or is it English? Well, of course, welcome is English. Here's the next one. Willkommen. Is it French? Is it German? Or is it English? Well, this one was German. How about the next one? Benvenuto. Is this one French? Is it Italian? Or is it Polish? Well, Benvenuto is Italian for welcome. Next one. Bienvenue. Is it Spanish? Is it Italian? Or is it French? What do you think? It's French. Next one. Huan Ying. Is it African? Is it Chinese? Or is it Vietnamese. It's Chinese. Shalom. Is it Arabic? Is it Polish? Or is it Jewish? Hmm. It's Jewish. 
wish. This is how Jesus would have said welcome and peace be with you. Next one. Kreuza. Kreuza. Is it Gaelic? Is it Welsh? Or is it Polish? Hmm. It's Welsh. Next one. Wam ukaleli kile. Hmm, that's a mouthful. Here we go. Is it Chinese? Is it Gaelic? Or is it Zulu? It's of course Zulu. Witami. Is it Belgian? Is it Austrian? Or is it Polish? This one is Polish. Next one. Falsche. Falsche. Is it Welsh? Is it Gaelic? Or is it Polish? Or is Gaelic? The Irish say, Caid me la fosha. Ten thousand or a hundred thousand welcomes. They're a very welcoming nation. And that's the last one. How many did you get? How many were brand new words? There was quite a few for me. My favourite was the Zulu word. Just imagine being able to instantly speak that language without going to the country or even picking up a single book. That is what happens in our story, which is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Now, after Jesus died, Jesus' followers were very sad and they were frightened and they gathered in the upper room. This was the same room where Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper. Jesus' followers were a lot like us now while we're in lockdown. They were scared for their lives to go out. In their case, they were afraid of being arrested by both the Jewish religious leaders and the Romans. But then something wonderful happened. Jesus did what he and lots of the prophets had foretold. Jesus rose from the dead and proved that he truly was the one sent by God to save us all. Now, the news that Jesus had risen was a joy to all of Jesus' followers. Some believed instantly. Some needed a bit more convincing, such as doubting Thomas. But gradually, the good news spread to more and more people. The story I'm going to read today is all about the birthday of the Christian faith. And it starts in the upper room. Outside of the upper room, Lots of people from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem, the holy city, and it was for a celebration. And the city was busy and bustling. Inside the upper room, Jesus' followers were gathered together to worship in private and share stories about seeing Jesus after he had risen from the dead. They were also discussing what they should do to spread the good news about Jesus, because Jesus had now gone back to heaven. Then all at once, the sound of a whirlwind came rushing through the house where the followers of Jesus were gathered. There was a commotion. And flames and the Holy Spirit came, 
resting on each of the disciples' heads like a tongue of flame. As it whooshed into the room, the Holy Spirit filled them all with foreign languages. And the disciples spoke in words that they didn't understand. Inspired and with words gushing out of them, they poured out onto the streets. When the disciples came out, the crowds heard them speaking the message of Jesus in their own language. The people outside were amazed. How can this be? They asked, all of the followers of Jesus are from Galilee, but we can hear their message loud and clear in words that we understand. <laughs> Not everyone was impressed, though. Some listeners sneered, these people are drunk. But Peter, still filled to overflowing with the Spirit's power, stood up in front of all the people. We are not drunk, he said. It's only nine in the morning. No, you are seeing and hearing what the prophet Joel spoke about in the Old Testament. Peter continued, Joel said, God will pour his spirit out on all of the people. Children will prophesy and adults will see holy visions. The Holy Spirit is for everyone, men, women and children. And there will be signs in heaven and on earth. And these will be the last days. Peter continued, everyone who calls on the Lord's name shall be saved. How different Peter was after being filled with the Holy Spirit. Gone is the man who denied he even knew Jesus on the night that Jesus was arrested. Gone is the man who cowered and hid in the upper room. And here is a man filled with confidence to quote scripture and preach openly to the, the growing crowd. And he used this opportunity to tell the crowd what they must do if they want to follow Jesus. Like a fiery whirlwind it came, and the Spirit breathed new life into all of the followers of Jesus. And the people in the crowd asked, how can we also receive this with this wonderful gift? And Peter answered, Repent, and you too shall be saved. We will baptize you, and you can follow Jesus. Lots of people chose to follow Jesus, and many were baptized. The number of people who followed Jesus swelled from just the people in the upper room to over 3,000 people and the Christian church was born. I like hearing the Pentecost story and how the Holy Spirit gave all of Jesus' followers such enthusiasm and confidence. This was especially true for Peter, who is known as the rock on which our church is based. And now I'd like you to look at this picture and share it with you. It's a floodgate that has been opened and all the water is rushing through. Now close your eyes and imagine you were in that upper room. Think about the sound of the wind rushing through the room and filling you up with the Holy Spirit. Imagine how amazing it would feel to be able to tell everyone about Jesus and how much he loves us all. Pentecost is the day when the floodgates were opened and the Christian church was born and it grew 
and it grew and it grew. Now at Sunday school, we'd usually make something to remind us of the story we shared in church. If you're interested, then I've included some craft instructions at the end of this video. But if not, just end the video after this final prayer. Let's bow our heads again. Holy Spirit, wild wind, tongues of fire, words of inspiration, fill us with your confidence and energy and make each and every one of us a blessing to the world. Amen. If you're leaving us here, goodbye and God bless. If you've chosen to join in and make something, then welcome. Or maybe I should say, willkommen, bienvenue, or falsche. So let's get crafty. The Holy Spirit poured out over all of Jesus' followers in our story about Pentecost. So today I'm going to show you how to make a dove, which is a common symbol for the Holy Spirit. You might remember that when John the Baptist baptised Jesus, the Holy Spirit appeared as a dove above Jesus' head. Let's get started with our craft. Now you might need some help with the tricky cutting and please be careful not to hurt yourself. Before we start, please pause the video and get a sharp pair of scissors and a two litre milk carton. The first thing you need to do is give your milk carton a really good rinse out and peel off any labels. Step two, put the bottle on a hard surface like the floor or a table and poke your scissors into the bottle near the bottom. There's usually a natural line around the base shown. It's shown by the blue line here in the picture. Once your scissors, scissors are in, cut all the way around and remove the bottom section. This piece can then be recycled. Step three, on the opposite side from the handle, you'll find a seam which you should cut all the way up till you get to nearly the top where the two litre mark is. Step four, this step is where you make the beak of the bird. Starting at the top end of the seam, cut a curve around each side of the bottleneck towards the top, but don't cut right through the top. You can draw a line first, like shown, if it helps. Step five. This is making the dove's beak. Push the new beak flap that you've just made inside the, nettle, the neck of the bottle and up through the hole where the milk cup usually comes out. You may need to, pet, to bend it and push and wiggle it up a bit. Step six, now for the wings and tail. Hold the bottle in a horizontal position with the handle at the bottom. Starting a couple of centimetres in from the side, Cut a curve around and up towards the handle. Then round and down until you reach the bottom end of the seam that you cut out in step three. You can also recycle these plastic pieces and repeat on both sides to create two wings. Here's the best bit. Holding the bottle in a horizontal position again, with the handle at the bottom, bend the pointed wing you, you've just created outwards and downwards. You're essentially turning part of the bottle inside out, creating shoulders and shaped wings. Step eight, repeat on the other side, and all of a sudden you should have a, a milk bottle dove. 
you like, you can hang it up by a string. You could even attach red, orange and yellow streamers to represent the holy fire that rushed into the upper room and poured down onto Jesus' followers' heads. Whatever you do with your dove, remember, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit, which was a gift that Jesus left behind when he went back up into heaven to work from home. Have fun making your doves, everybody. Goodbye and God bless to everyone. Goodbye. The Spirit lives to set us free.